After leaving my narrowboat in the UK to head off on a two-month adventure across Europe with a friend of mine in our really old vans, not everything has gone to plan. However, join us this week as we go and explore Gibraltar, deal with a breakdown and get stuck behind a load of tractors. So today it's a really horrible blustery day. I don't think got blown into you then, Sandra. <laughs> and we thought it'd be a nice day to go and visit that over there, which is Gibraltar. So Gibraltar is here right on the edge of the Iberian Peninsula and it has been a possession of the United Kingdom since 1704. The other cool thing about it is you can just walk straight over the border as long as you've got your passport. So it's nice to be back in the UK again. We've got Winston Churchill Avenue there, red phone boxes, very British. And it's so weird seeing lots of British shops. We've seen a Matalan, a Marks and Spencer's. I think everything's, I don't know if it's fat free or something, but it's cheaper than it has been in Spain, especially like alcohol and cigarettes and stuff. But obviously you've got to be careful taking stuff through the border again. But yeah, but it's wonderful just walking around. It's a very big contrast to where we've been in Spain. So there's only one thing better than a cannon and that's two cannons. Look at these beauties. We're going to be getting a cable car up to the top of the rock. So this huge rock is a big one. It's over 1,350 feet above sea level and was formed by early Jurassic limestones and dolomites. It also contains over 100 caves and tunnels. So we've just got the cable car up to the top here and there's monkeys everywhere. Sandra's got a little few fun facts about monkeys for you. So these macaques actually live in groups where there is a dominant female or matriarch and then generally there's a second and third in command as well. The groups can actually be up to about 100 and apparently there's about 250 of these macaque monkeys in Gibraltar. So another really interesting fact about the monkeys is that when the British took Gibraltar years and years and years ago, the Spanish and the French kept trying to take it back and it was a war that lasted years. What happened is once when the French were invading, the monkeys alerted all the British. They began to scream and woke up all the soldiers. So now there's a saying that whilst the monkeys remain in Gibraltar, so will the British. So Gibraltar is actually only, it's three miles long and it's three quarters of a mile wide and that's it. So they call this the Skywalk and it's some tough and glass over the edge of the rock. <laughs> it's quite strong. <laughs> Would you walk on it? So there's loads of things about Gibraltar like all the history and the fact that the shops are cheap and it's some sort of tax haven. <laughs> but we just love the monkeys.
So these monkeys have now become an endangered species because lots of people are having them for pets and while I'm sitting here I'm feeling a bit of an endangered species because Heidi's desperate for this monkey to jump on top of me. They are very mischievous. Even if you own a backpack they actually know how to open the zips and we just saw one earlier pinch some biscuits off somebody and they opened the packet and just sat there eating the biscuits like they'd got a cup of coffee next to them. Yeah I was hoping that monkey there would have a poo on Sandra's head <laughs> but yeah they are so inquisitive but they're not scared of us at all they're very friendly aren't you hey are you friendly <coughs> hello oh I've got nothing in my hand no 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 thank you for the handshake he's just been scratching his bum so another interesting fact about monkeys is they just groom each other they test boundaries by sticking the fingers up each other's noses and up the bums, they do all stuff like that. But another interesting fact is when monkeys greet each other, they rub their genitals together. Yeah, just thought you'd find that interesting. Cause I knew what you lot are like. So we're about to go into St. Michael's cave and they believe that it's bottomless. So due to the erosion of the limestone rock, there's over 200 caves here on Gibraltar and throughout history they've often played a military or a defensive role. And because we're in a cave, you do get the odd drip on your head. Yeah, I've had a few drips. But it's just amazing. And there's a big angel. When it all lights up and you look up, you can see an angel. It's just, it's got a wonderful feel about it, a nice vibe. So if you're going to come to Gibraltar and the Rock, you've got to go to St. Michael's Cave. It's outstanding and they've done this brilliant light and sound show in there. They've made it into like a theatre, there's a big theatre space, so they put on like ballet and drama shows. So it's a great space for, for the arts. It's wonderful. And then you've got all the history attached to it as well. When the battles were there and people used to sneak into the caves and all this. But that cave, it's just outstanding. That's my favourite thing of today so far. My favourite bit would be if a monkey jumped on you. Cheeky mare. <laughs> so on a good day, when it's not so overcast and cloudy, you can actually see Africa, Morocco, from this rock. And apparently they believe that the monkeys got to Gibraltar because there was a hidden underground tunnel which they've yet to find from Africa to here. Yeah, that would be ace, wouldn't it? but loads of drug smuggling goes on because you get all the ribs and the boats, they come to the beaches with loads of hash, apparently. So you have to watch out for that. Yeah, where's them beaches? So they call this Windsor Bridge and it's quite bouncy isn't it? It is, it's got an amazing <laughs> view, a big suspension bridge it yeah. is. So. so if you can bounce on it, be careful you don't give yourself two black eyes. Go on Sandra. So guys, we've got a little bit of a drama this morning. Sandra's van won't start and we need to be off here by 11, otherwise we're gonna get charged for another night. So we're gonna try and jump it now. Oh, bloody hell. Hey Dad, it's the connecting oven. We're not sure which order, red and black and that. Remember, it's red to red, that's positive to positive. Yeah. <laughs> try, try your car. Try starting it, yeah, yeah. So this is a nightmare. So unfortunately, it still won't start. I've rung my dad, he's talked us through loads of things, including the jump leads. Also, I've had to whack it with a hammer, the starter motor, because remember, that worked on my boat for ages. Um, but that didn't work either, so we're calling breakdown out now. One hour later. So I don't know how this is going to go now, because Sandra loves a man in uniform. And this guy, high vis, it just sends her over the edge, honestly. <laughs> So 
So the update is, he's got it going. <laughs> it's working and it's a starter motor. He whacked it from the top, whereas I whacked it from underneath. Now, there's loads of wires and everything on the top. And I was scared of it and then. So we're just shooting off very quickly now to get this new starter motor. Hopefully these places will have it in stock. Bloody hell. And you know what? The sun's come out. The sun is out. Oh. 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 Come on. Because the thing is, if she stops the car, if she stalls the car, then it won't start again. <laughs> So the breakdown guy gave Sandra a list of garages in the area, so hopefully one of those will stop the part. But this is a good thing about travelling in a convoy in a duo with a friend, is if a van is sort of immobile for a few days, at least we've got the other one to go off and get supplies or take the toilets to be emptied, things like that. So hopefully it won't take too long. But also a big thanks to Phil and Lynn. We showed them in the last video. They've got the sailboat here in the marina and they have been lovely. Phil came out today to try and see if he could help. Lynn made us bacon butties. So it just brightened the mood up a little bit, you know. And this is the thing you see, I've said this about boat life in the past and now with van life. It's not about these epic park ups or mooring up or the beautiful scenery or all these adventures. It's all about the people. So if you do see Phil and Lynn on Narrowboat Speedwell in the UK on your travels, please do give them a big wave and a smile. Anyway, let's hope now we can get this bloody part. But somewhere go and hide, looking for a new star. Yeah, somewhere go and hide, looking for a new star, for a new star. So we're currently at the second garage. Remember, Sandra can't turn her engine off. She turns it off, she'll never start it again. So she's running in. I'm keeping watch on both fans because she has to leave keys in ignition. Anyway, this guy's having a look now, so hopefully they've got the part. Yeah, but it's, it's already half two and it's a Friday. Yeah. I don't think it's looking very hopeful, to be honest. <laughs> So we arrived here yesterday after visiting about five different garages and Sandra's van is still not fixed. We've ordered the part though, the part's been ordered from a garage which is about three or four miles up the road. So we're going to stay here now for till Monday, which is two days time, and hope that the, it all goes to plan. We have been shown as well how we can start the van by smacking the hell out of the starter motor but from the top because when I did it, I hit it from the bottom. So we're just hoping it starts again, but at least the garage is only about, about four miles, yeah. about four or yeah. five miles down the road, not far. Yeah, but this is a lovely little park up. There's uh, loads of kite surfers over here and people windsurfing. So because of Sandra's starter motor, we've got to stay put for a few days anyway. So I've just done a big bulk cook. I've just done a load of meatballs and onions and tomato sauce. And I can have that with pasta over the next few days. But hopefully on Monday, we'll have more of an update as what's going on. Will it be fixed? We hope so. Fingers crossed for us guys, fingers crossed. Two thousand years later. So after about five or six days of Sandra's van not working, it has finally been fixed, which is great. However, the next drama now is we're trying to get to Portugal today. I'm meeting up with a friend there and uh, we're stuck in a massive traffic jam. We've been stuck in quite a few of them and it's all the farmers. The farmers are blocking the 
exits and entrances onto motorways and roundabouts in a big protest. It happened in France a few weeks ago and in Belgium and now the Spanish have joined in. It's a bit of a disruption but I completely understand why they're doing it. So yeah, so it's just a bloody pain in the ass. Goodbye Spain and hello Portugal! I'm not sure what hello is in Portugal yet. We'll find out when we get here. But we're now in Portugal, so that means we've done Belgium, France, Spain, and now Portugal. So we are now in Portugal. We arrived here yesterday and since we've been here, it has not stopped raining. It's been non-stop, and it? Pouring down. <laughs> but, but we're on a campsite and there's a few reasons for that. I'll let Sandra explain. Yeah, um, I've actually got to unexpectedly pop back to Ireland. So obviously, because I had to leave the van, we couldn't leave it anywhere where it was at risk or it might get moved on. So we've come to a campsite where we're booked in and it's safe. And Heidi's going to be looking after my dogs for me with a friend. She's got a friend, Linny, who's also at this campsite. So it just makes it easier with two people looking after them because two big dogs are taken out for a walk. Yeah, and my mate, Linny, you'll see her in the video because obviously, even though I'm just going home, I'll still do a bit of recording and that. But yes, and Linny's another female van lifer and she's done a lot of travelling. So I think you'll find some of her stories quite interesting. But the other thing is because we've had to come to a campsite and because of Sandra's breakdown it's meant that we've had to sort of well we've lost quite a few days haven't we yeah so we've had to change our route and skip a few things that we did really want to do but that that's part of van life and we always knew that and there's going to be some new things we can now do because yeah. we've kind of come into Portugal instead and this is the thing is they're out of your control these things are out of your control and there's nothing you can do about it there's no point stressing you've just got to always make the best of any situation and and that's what we are doing we're still we'll, we'll still always have fun but anyway sorry i've got the tripod in i keep wobbling it because i'm holding it with my arm so <laughs> so we're going to leave the video here so if you have enjoyed it please uh give it a thumbs up subscribe down below and a massive thank you to this week's pirate crew lots of you have been over there so thank you so much cheers cheers this is a white rum we're drinking here woohoo mmm so that's it guys so hopefully next week it's going to be a little bit different but sandra will hopefully join us towards the end of the week when yeah, she's back, back from ireland yeah so that's it so please take care stay safe and a uh, big thanks to the patrons